song to play in. Fresh presents eight urban celebrities battling it out Maori and Pacifica styles in a bid to not be the most plastic poly present. Oh, and this sweet ass prize. A trip for two to the Pearl of the Pacific, Samoa, courtesy of Air New Zealand. And five nights accommodation at the luxurious Taumiasina Island Resort. We'll even throw in some pocket money so our winner can fill their suitcase up with turtle chips for the flight home. It's time to swap those Jordans for Jandals. This is... Know Your Roots. Look at me, yeah, I'm feeling flat. Whoa, look, look at me, yeah, I'm feeling flat. I know that <laughs> we are a bunch of plastics. I am a plastic poly. Yeah, I'm as plastic as they come. <laughs> I, I'm pretty plastic. I, I don't really know too much about, like, my culture. I'm here to smash that myth that Pacific Islanders from the South Island, from Christchurch, are plastic. How come I didn't work on not being a plastic Māori? I think um, I've just been busy. I know Talofa Lava, uh, Sao'i. Oh my gosh, I was going to say Haukiheni, but that's Tongan. Wow! I'd love to know more about my culture. It's always been on my like bucket list to like learn it, but I know to like learn it, you'd have to go live in Samoa. But I always get heaps of like like mosquito bites when I go there. I have no idea what's going to happen at Know Your Roots. I really don't know what's going to happen because I don't know what type of challenges that are going to come our way. You know, like this, some of the tasks might be directed towards Maori culture. So I'm really excited to learn some of the cultures and also learn about Polynesian cultures because we're all, we're all cousins. Yeah, we're going to learn a lot. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I saw the competitors, I was like, good looking bunch of people. Nice, I fit in really well. <laughs> well, I recognize um, some Curtis. Who's it, Curtis? What's his name from Shortland Street? That's so me. Oh my God, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> Who am I worried about? Probably myself. My Unleash the Beast. Where I come from, if you're not first, you're last. There's only one place. It's number one. Boomer the God. Get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to Know Your Roots. It's game time. Even though I'm not competitive, but it's game time. This is a competition that pits all of you urban Māori and PEIs against each other in a series of traditional Pacifica and tikanga-based challenges to figure out which one of you is the least plastic poly. <laughs> That's why they chose us. I don't call myself a plastic poly, but everybody else does. I know quite a bit about my culture. Obviously, my family is Māori, um, going to the marae for tangis and things like that. The winner will be crowned the Know Your Roots champ and will be able to go home and face their Fano without feeling the wrath of the Salu. I love you, Nana. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm sure that won't happen. I'm Ollie Coddington. I'll be your host. I'll be your referee. I'll be the law. Bianca, growing up in Christchurch, yep. did you do much traditional Samoan stuff? Yep. We, um... No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, probably the fairest one here. You know a bit of your tikanga though, bro? Fair bit, coming from up north. Ko Ruben, ho my wairangi milna, aho. Ko Ngati Fatua Tiwi. Today, you'll be competing in a hangi making challenge. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Boom! I know hangis. This is my challenge. Scared, nervous, because I've, I've never made a hangi before. So as soon as he said that, I was just like. No, I haven't made a hangi before just because of the pure fact I don't like eating my hands dirty. In Te Ao Māori, your mana can be judged by how well you feed and look after your guests. And a hangi is one of the best ways to cook for a large group of people. You will be split into two teams of four, where you must make a hangi from scratch. I hope Ruben's in my team. Our beautiful Grace, because she comes from the naughty North, and I know she would have seen a hangi or two. <laughs> if we're climbing coconut trees, Maybe me, because I watched a tutorial on that before I came. Billy, 
He's got big muscles, so maybe he can dig the hole. <laughs> I think we will do good if we're climbing coconut trees. I don't want my team Terrell and she. They talk too much. <laughs> First, you must select what food you'll be cooking in your hangi. Then, you'll have to dig your hangi pit and build and light a fire to heat the rocks. From there, your kai must be prepped for the hangi basket. And once the rocks have been heated long enough, you'll clean out the ash from the pits, then lay down and cover your kai baskets. Once you think the hangi is cooked, you must serve me up a delicious tasting and looking kai. The winner will be the team with the tastiest hangi and will be going through to the next round. The losing team, one of you will be going home to learn how to cook. <laughs> Who here has made a hangi before? Who's the one that knows how to make a hangi because I want to be on your team? I have made multiple hangis. OK, I have done one, but I didn't put up my hand to say I had. Yeah, so I've done one before. Here are your teams. Team Kahurangi will be Terrell, Ooh. Philly, yeah. Shushila and Raze. Oh, I think we're going to be a great team. We all work together. I will probably be camp mother, which I'm sure they won't mind. They seem nice at first class. I don't think I'm going to do well. I just hope that it's cooked good. We'll find out. <laughs> team Karaka will be Boomer, Ruben, Bianca and Grace. I am very happy with my team. I mean, I was hoping to get partner with Boomer because, you know, sweat it. I <laughs> love it, boy. Three, one, two. See what I did there. Three, one, two, baby, baby. Ooh, three, one, two, baby, yeah. baby. Good luck and go hard, or you might be going home. <laughs> All right, Team Kahurangi, you ready? Yo. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Team Karaka, kuorite. Kuorite. Yeah. Okay, Toru, Rua, Tahi, Team Mata. Today, you'll be competing in a hangi making challenge. You'll be split into two teams of four, where you must make a hangi from scratch. The winner will be the team with the tastiest hangi and will be going through to the next round. Team Mata! <laughs> All the people on my team are basic savages. All I saw was the orange team running in front of us. I was like, no! Rip all people out of the way, shoulder barge them. I'm just running straight for the kumara. <laughs> We actually missed out on the kumara. Yeah, I was just looking at other things that I could grab that they couldn't grab. And so I'm grabbing the yo, basket, yo, 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 she's yo. grabbing the meat. Yo, yo. For some reason, Boomer didn't want to touch the meat, so he grabbed the basket and then I grabbed the meat. I don't like touching meat with both bare hands. He needs to come up north for a couple of weeks. I just grabbed the big stuff. I grabbed pumpkin, I grabbed uh, cabbage. I'm going for all the seasoning. I'm taking all the seasoning. I'm not going to let any of the other team have any of the seasoning. I've got the cookie rocks. Sure, I grabbed the rocks and I thought they were like rocks to heat, you know, for the honey, but it was just for decoration. We decided just to go for pork. No chicken. You've got to cook that properly. Grab more veggies because they're better for you, obviously. Great skin. We did really good. Like, I got the things we wanted. I was like, get those steaks, get the chicken, get the um, lamb leg, which is like golden to me because I love cooking lamb. I was probably the most invaluable person in that little grab part. Here we go, bro. Let's get to So this. we've got the boys digging, and me and Grace, we're doing the veggies. Oh. Not to be stereotypes, fat girls, you know, chop it up, make yeah. it nice. Boys dig that hole. Pretty solid line around there. So the pit's got to be straight flush edges, squared off, deep enough to fit two and a half baskets. Me and Billy are much bigger, so we're like, OK, this is going to be easy. Oh my gosh, what's underneath here, concrete? We're hearing a bit of rocks. What the hell? We're just hitting rock, hitting rock. Oh, look at that. But it's uh, just shells. There's rocks underneath here. You think it'll make a good hangi? All I heard was yeah, blah, 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 blah. So we dig past the first inch, two, and that's just easy running from there. We hit a couple of rocks. And me and the bro Ruben were just getting into it. Which turned into more rocks. Shall we dig another hole? Probably already a basket deep. And they had started their second hole. Hopefully the boys are doing well. Oh, this is way easier. This is maybe what you guys had. What, heart and mana? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cut up most of the kumara, cut up the potatoes. Bianca's peeling the carrots. Actually, in the beginning, I actually didn't peel the carrots, so 
we'll just say Grace did the carrots. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. You're just trying to make sure that all the cuts of vegetables are kind of the same size or they'll cook evenly at the same time so that there's nothing overcooked or undercooked when it comes out. We ended up digging four holes. When we got to the fourth hole, which was really close to them, it was so easy, much more easy. It was like hot knife through butter. Peel the outsides first, we'll keep those, utilise those. I think I bring a camp mum vibe. That, it's better to have too much than too little. She keeps telling me, do it this way, do it that way, but I'm doing it my own way as well. Yeah. Cut it in half again. I tend to sound quite bossy. My family would say I'm, I'm real bossy and I tell people what to do. Uh, I don't know, if she kind of continues like this, there might be a problem. All I hear is complaining over there, bro. <laughs> Solutions, boys. Giving us a lot of stick about our poor attempt of digging. Save those rocks you're digging up for the honey. Philly's got these big ass muscles, but he's getting little splinters. I knew I should have done the cooking. I moisturize quite a lot, so doing physical work is not very good for my hands. Complain about something real. Do you feel my pain? <laughs> You give it to me, but I'll give it back to you too. Oh, is that how you're cutting your cabbage? Yeah. Might burn that. How can we just put both on everything in? Okay. We mixed up our salt, our mixed herbs, our pepper, got all of that in there and did a little. <laughs> oh, can I please borrow it? Yeah. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> they lent us a knife. So that was really nice of them. And then they asked if we had any salt, and we were like, nah, sorry, we've got no salt. They were ruthless. They caught up real quick. I think the bro's muscles must have started working. I feel like it feels too Phillies, man. We could have dug four of those holes in the same day. He did, he did amazing. You can do it, put your back into it. Yeah. I can do it, put your back into it. Actually, we all had a hand in building the fire. I reckon just like X kind of formations. Hashtag. So what we started off with was uh, medium-sized logs at the bottom of the pit in a sort of crisscross pattern so we could get that airflow. The key to an amazing fire is oxygen. There's a lot of wind going, so I feel like there's enough airflow. Did she a took charge? She's kind of added some direction to the team, which is good. She did a great job doing that. Yeah, so we'll go kindling now, I reckon. She's just basically telling us, you know, do this, do that, do that, and um, yeah, we had no say. <laughs> we'll just angle the ones that are too big. The boys are listening to her, I'm listening to her. Why do we have to listen to her? <laughs> we gotta chuck all the brush in, we can't be light with it. <sighs> Put on the Manuka brush, which is gonna make everything beautiful. Chucked on some kindling and slowly made our way thicker and thicker branches until we got to the thicker spot up the top and then put the stones on top. Heavy lights! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Nice team! Team! Oh, Woo. It was me. It was Woo. me. It was me. Yes. I really don't know how our two friends come up with the idea to make rock hot enough to cook food. I don't know, I think it's genius. So our hangi pit has been burning for three hours now. So we are moving the rocks. Go boys, get that ash. <laughs> Once the ash is out, we flatten the rocks, pour a little bit of water in, put that fire out and create some steam. Get the sheets ready. The girls put the basket over and then we put a wet sheet over. Yep, and then just like kind of overlap them. Three sacks, long ways, and then three sacks sideways. That's sucks, eh? Putting dirt around the edges of it so none of the steam can come out from under the sacks. I hope not too much dirt got mixed in with the food. It all comes down to how good the honey's gonna taste. I was just hoping it'll cook. It's a close game. I know 100% that we will blow these guys out of the water. Today, you'll be competing in a hangi making challenge. The winner will be going through to the next round. I'm taking all the seasoning. I'm not going to let any of the other team have any of the seasoning. It all comes down to how good the hangi's going to taste. I was just hoping it'll cook. OK, Team Kahurangi, Team Karaka. Hangi's been cooking away for long enough. You know what to do. Let's get those baskets out of Papatuanuku.
Team up there. We're scraping all the dirt off to the side. We basically just started pulling out all the mud with our hands. Remove the sacks individually. Nice. Oh, yeah. oh. All that beautiful oh, smell came out, bro. It was, oh, it smells so good. You can just smell the aroma. You can see the juices just flowing. I'm just like, yes, let's get it on the plate. I want to see it. We just got a bit of pumpkin, plonked it on the plate, bit of meat, chucked it next to the pumpkin, and voila. It's Philly and I's idea to mash the pumpkin. I put uncooked pickle pickle on our plate as a garnish. I never actually tried it, but I, I think I want to now. I feel like we're, we're doing a good job. I want to talk about my nails now. <laughs> <laughs> so Grace is taking charge of presentation. Playing around, changing things up. We went for simplicity, veggies. And we had a big piece of pork that was sitting on a bit of pork fat with seasoning. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really good. Team Kahurangi, Team Karaka, congratulations on not burning down this beautiful tropical venue. Everything Ollie says in one ear, at the other. I'm pretty hungry. Bring up some kai. I'm going to start with Team Kahurangi. She. So she takes up the plate of cardboard and wrap manure. I wanted a piece of that hangi. Like, I was like, can you eat it and then can we finish off our part? <laughs> Moment of truth. Do you want a spit bucket? I'm looking at ours, and then I'm looking at theirs, and then I'm looking at ours. So, feeling confident. He's doing a lot of chewing. Ooh. I'm pretty confident. Pretty good. Confidence levels are pretty high. Team Karaka. Grace. Mm. They seemed pretty confident too. I don't know why, because it just looked like there was too much seasoning. You know, hurry up and eat your food and just make a decision already, damn it. <laughs> Another really nice hangi, Team Karaka. That's very nerve-wracking. All right, team Kahurangi, team Karaka, big ups on cooking me a mean feed. I knew that was a wrap from them. Kahurangi, really liked the variety you had on the plate. Ba, boy, ba. <laughs> Lovely garnishes, although the unripe pickle pickle may have poisoned me, I don't know. He doesn't understand pickle pickle. Obviously, you can't eat it. Team Karaka. Slightly less variety, but the pork was cooked mean as. There was nothing bad about ours. He was just saying that for television. Good job, both of you, however. And he can be one winner of this challenge. Nervous and confident at the same time. I'm not sure who he's going to pick. This challenge is super close, like real neck and neck. The deciding factor for me... One was seasoned. <laughs> and so the winner is Team Karaka. Yay! <laughs> they cheated! No, we don't deserve to lose because we didn't take all the seasoning. I feel like they shouldn't have celebrated like that. They should have been maybe a bit more humble. I knew I wasn't going home. Huh? I'm the threat here. I'll eat all these guys for breakfast. I am really, really pissed off, to be honest. Team Karaka, congratulations. You're safe from elimination. You'll be going straight through to the next round. Thank you. The rosary beads paid off today. Team Kahurangi, now's the tricky part. One of you has to go home, and you will decide. <gasps> it hit me in the gut, really, bro, oh, no. So you will individually come forward and vote for who you think will be leaving today. <laughs> no! No! And we're going to start with you, Raze, so please come forward, starting with you. Hi, Mike. Mike. Go with your heart. Philly. <laughs> your hair looks nice. Philly. I go, so what are we doing now? And then he said, oh, you're going to pack your bags. I'm going to vote you off. Terrell, your next vote. I don't mate. We have like no time to think and I'm just okay, who am I gonna vote? Don't like 
being put in those type of situations. He looked you right in the eye. <laughs> it was a tough call to make. See you later. <laughs> okay, Team Kaurangi, as fate would have it. No one received a majority vote. You each got one vote. Oh, bro. What are the chances of that? Who voted for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel betrayed. There's a sinking feeling in my stomach that the voting for the elimination is going to be passed on to us. So, because you couldn't decide between yourselves individually, Team Karaka, I'm going to give you 30 seconds between you to decide who's going home today. Now we have to vote. That's tough. So your time starts now. I don't want to be a part of this, you know? I need to create allies on both teams. Nah, it's good. It's good. Being in control. <laughs> that discussion was actually really hard. This is a competition. These are challenges. We're here to win. The discussion is to eliminate what we think is the greatest threat. I was really conscious of how my teammates were making the decision. I was like, okay, Boomer's playing the game. Grace doesn't care. So... <laughs> oh my gosh, my heart was like this. <laughs> we need to send the biggest three home. Boomer and Ruben were going in, so I was just like, follow your lead. Yes, everyone is in agreement. Time's up. <laughs> Boomer, you can be the one to break the bad news. Oh, my goodness. Well, wasn't my choice. But as a team, we've chosen Terrell. Let a bowl. Bye, Terrell. See you on Instagram. <laughs> I got voted off day one. <laughs> this is going to be mentioned forever, I feel. Oh. King of plastics. <laughs> the, the plastic king. <sighs> Learning your culture, heritage, all that stuff's definitely important. Um, and it's definitely something I want to learn. And um, obviously, something I'm not that great at right now. But um, we'll get better. And uh, season two, I'll be back. <laughs> Boomer. He's still growing. Short legs, short arms. He's got a bit to say about everything. I got you, I got you. Blabber mouth. What you got? What you got, sweater? <laughs> he cheated. Bianca made me her nemesis. I just came here to play the game. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.